At the end of day one, there were, I think, 25 people left. This feels a little bit smaller than the first tournament I played. It was like 406 people, I believe. And uh, I think I was tied for 7th in chips out of 25. So I wasn't a chip leader, but I was in decent shape. And I'll tell you the biggest thing on my mind. Uh, the first tournament I played, I just kind of played and uh, where I finished, I finished. I didn't really have a goal in mind. This one, my goal was to win by this point. And I remember talking on the phone to my mom and I said, going into day two, which is only a two-day event back then. I said, I want to win this. I don't want second. I don't want another third. I don't want just the final table. I want to win the bracelet this time. And she's saying, you yeah, know, you can't think like that. There's 25 people left. There's only a small chance you're going to be the one to win. You know, you, you can't be disappointed if you still get a high finish but don't win it. And I said, I will be. I've already had my third place. I want to win it this time. And I was so focused on winning that time. And uh, I actually managed to do it. And, uh, you know, I can tell you that that day when I won that tournament was uh, probably the best day of my life. Well, the toughest opponent is always the one who has the most chips, and uh, that was Q Dong, who I'd play, played with before a lot online, and uh, fortunately, uh, I didn't even remember this, but uh, I guess I had won a lot of hands against her online, I'd just been very lucky against her on PokerStars, and she remembered that, which I guess you remember a lot more of the people you have trouble with than the people that you always beat. So uh, she complained to me at the final table that it always seems like I'm beating her. And she said this to me after I won, like, uh, two or three straight hands against her. And I think, oh, this is good. <laughs> you know, this is good that I have the person who has more chips than me is getting concerned that they always have bad luck against me. So that was nice to hear. And uh, as far as the other players at the table, there were some very uh, um, accomplished players. Not, not huge names. I guess the biggest uh, name at the table was Cindy Violet, but she never had that many chips, and uh, she finished seventh. But uh, a number of the other people I've seen uh, have uh, gotten pretty deep in World Series events, have been around for a long time, uh, have continued to do well afterwards and win other tournaments. Uh, one of them, uh, Matt Harlenko, isn't very well known in the tournament scene, but is one of the top limit hold'em cash players online. And uh, So I was actually against a lot of people that were pretty good. I just didn't realize who a lot of them were at the time. Uh, fortunately, I got a lot of cards my hands held up, and other people's hands weren't holding up, so when I was making some moves on people, when I thought they might be weak, they really were, and they folded their hands. And just everything worked out. You know, it was one of those days where you just keep catching everything when pretty much everything goes right. And it happened on the right day, and that's what I was hoping for. There was no one big hand, especially because of this limit, and uh, you kind of move up more slowly. I was just winning most of the hand I was playing. And in Limit, you cannot win if you do not catch cards. It's not like No Limit where you can put big moves on people. In Limit, you've got to have real hands to win for the most part. You can pull off a few bluffs, but if you don't catch hands, you are absolutely not going to win. So I was making a lot of hands, and I was accumulating a lot of chips, and I came in second in chips to the final table. After not that long of a time, I was first in chips. After not that much long of a time after that, I was the clear chip leader. Uh, there was one other person with a lot of chips, and that was Daryl Mixon, and I had a feeling it would be me and him heads up. And that's exactly what it became. You know, uh, it was nerve-wracking, but I kind of got myself in the mode. I, I called it like a tension mode. I wasn't nervous, but I was tense. And I, I first thought I, maybe I should relax and not be tense. But then I realized the tension was good because it made me focus. And it made me just uh, have like laser beam focus on what was going on in that event and just... Uh, playing every hand like it's super important. And it's a lot of money and a World Series of Bracelet on the line. First place is 347000 Second was about half of that. So you're dealing with uh, uh, you know, well over $150,000 difference between the two and a World Series Bracelet. And I've never had a heads-up match in my, in my life that was that important. But fortunately, most of the way I had a big chip lead. At the very beginning, he won like five out of six hands and almost got even with me. But before I could panic about it, I won a bunch of hands after that. And was a good deal ahead most of the way. My only problem in that heads-up match was I could not finish him off. Uh, I'd get him down 9-1, to 10-1 to 1 in chips, and you think it's over at that point? Well, it never was. I could, just could never close it out and get it done. And, uh, you know, he just kept picking up better hands than me when his all-in would be on the line. He didn't quite go all-in, but he came very close. And then I'd win those chips back, then I'd lose those chips back, then I'd win them back, going back and forth, back and forth. And I remember when we got to the break, when the limits went up again, and he had just won a pot, and uh, I think I had like uh, 950000 he had 250000 I thought to myself, oh no, the limits just went up, 
He just won a pot to bring himself uh, still much shorter stack than me, but still now within striking distance. If he gets a few lucky hands to begin here, I could be in big trouble. This will be like one of the biggest choke jobs of all time. I have a 10 to 1 lead on the guy and I lose. And I got very concerned about this and uh, I kind of walked away by myself for a while during the 15 minute break. And uh, someone who I knew f uh, from poker, not, not a close friend, just kind of an acquaintance, but uh, he saw me and uh, he kind of gave me a pep talk in the middle and said, you're going to beat this guy, you're going to win it, just relax, don't worry about what's going to happen, just play your best game and I'm sure you're going to win. And I came back and seven minutes later it was over. So uh, the funny thing with the very last hand was that uh, I knew I was going to win on that hand. And despite all the other hands where I could have won and didn't, when this one was dealt to me, I knew that was going to be it. And I usually am not a big believer in superstition or uh, any stuff like that. But I got dealt 10-7 of diamonds, which is by no means pocket aces. And I looked down and I saw 10-7 of diamonds and I said, I'm going to win a bracelet with this hand. And uh, I flopped the 7. The flop was a, like a king 7-6. And, or not King 7, King 7 something. And it turned out he had a strong hand. He had a king. And uh, he pl played it strong on the flop. And I actually was going to wait till the turn to put the final chips in, even though it didn't really matter. And I closed my eyes for a second, which you couldn't see behind my sunglasses. I closed my eyes and envisioned a 10 falling. Not another 7, but a 10. And a 10 hit the turn. And when that 10 hit the turn, I thought to myself, oh my god, I'm really going to win a bracelet. And he bet. I raised him for his final chips, and we stood up, and he turned over his hand. It turned out he had a lot of draws to uh, knocking out my middle two pair. And safe card hit the river, and it was over. So that was the hand 10-7 of diamonds, and uh, there was the bracelet. The card protector, I, can, I can't just describe it to you. I can show it to you. It is a bottle of head and shoulders. And whenever people see this who don't know me and my nickname from online, they think, what the hell? Why would this guy bring a bottle of shampoo to a poker tournament? Well, that's to represent my screen name of Dan Druff. And people say, why would you pick a name like that? I picked a name like that just because I thought it was funny, and I picked it as one of my first names online when I played on Paradise Poker and uh, later on Poker Stars. And uh, that's where I got to be best known, and because I played so much online, I got to be kind of known better online. Even though I was playing live also, that's where I was known the best. So... When I did well in these tournaments, uh, everyone was putting nicknames along with their name, so I listed myself as Todd Dandruff Wittellis. And I thought, well, I see all these people with uh, interesting card protectors. I think I'll get one, too. And uh, I got this uh, small travel bottle of Head & Shoulders, which uh, obviously has an association with Dandruff. And uh, that's what I use every time I play a tournament.